come in. All right. Time some for some questions. Bring It On. Let's Are you ready? It. Oh, I can hardly okay. wait. All right. <laughs> okay. This is Brenda Pat who says, My husband wants to travel with family this summer, but his brother and the brother's fiance are not yet married. They frequently travel together and share a room to save money, but they're not having sex and sleep in separate beds. And I trust this is the truth. Is this a black and white issue or a gray area? I feel that they are setting a bad example at best, and at worst, it could be much more serious. Anyway, should I agree to this vacation or risk causing familial strife by bringing this up? If there's no sexual sin involved, maybe it would be the best to let it go. Look, why don't they get married? I don't understand this. I mean, you know, they, they, they travel together. They sleep in the same room together. They probably sleep in the same bed together, and yet they say we're not having sex. That's nuts. I mean, to say that, I mean, that's frustrating. It, it, I mean, it's crazy. it makes no sense. It's illogical. And um, as far as what you're saying, uh, the Bible says, you know, the King James says, avoid every, every uh, appearance. appearance, but it's not, it's, it's every form of evil and not appearance. So it's not appearances, it's the form. And I think for a couple to be cohabiting uh, without being married, it just, Sets a very bad example for mm -hmm. people, and and but I, it, it says their values are screwed up. Yeah, but what does she do? Her husband wants to travel with. This is his family, and they want to go on a joint family vacation. Well, she's got to say, "I'm sorry, darling. I just can't go along with that," and that's going to cause a, a big rift. But you know, just say if brother Charlie and his girlfriend want to stay together, then by all means, you know, perform a wedding ceremony and get them mm -hmm. together. I mean, I don't understand it. I just... You know, well, I'm, this is kind of how we've slid to where we are today. I know. Culturally. It's, it's so easy. Yeah. But you tell me you're going to sleep in the same room with a woman uh, and you're uh, a healthy young male and you're not going to have sex? Come off it. How dumb do you think we not are? buying that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I ain't buying it. Okay, what else? Okay, this is Mrs. C who says, what are your thoughts on biometric IDs? Well, I, I you know, I don't know what a biometric, whether it's, a, it's an iris scan or whether it's uh, something about the blood or whatever. I don't see anything wrong with it. I mean, what's to say? But is that coming closer to the mark of the beast? The answer is yes. Mm -hmm. uh, they're going to have a, a tattoo that they can tattoo something in your hand and uh, you, they can put a, a marker in there that will monitor your blood pressure and your heart and heart rate and all the rest of it. And uh, then they can also have one that will keep your medical records and then uh, show things that are done to you. Not a bad thing, but it sure will be the way toward Big Brother. All right. Okay, this is Marissa who says, Yesterday my dad was lecturing me about how I never listen to him when he's trying to teach me about life. He told me about how he gets a perfect score on every test he takes and he wants me to be just like him. I know being intelligent is important, but I'm trying to live a Christian life. I want to be wise, but he keeps telling me that the only thing that matters in life is being smart and successful. I know that saying nothing isn't helping, but I fear a bigger gap between us if I speak up. He's very arrogant, lukewarm, and worldly, and I want to be humbled, strong in faith, and spiritual. I don't know how I can be close to him when he's choosing a different path than I am. Please help. Well, you're supposed to honor your mother and father, so you honor him and say, you know, you're a very, very brilliant man, and tell me how you do those things. Ask him questions about how he succeeds. How, how do you take those tests? What do you do to study for them? Stuff like that. But you don't have to accept his values. His values are wrong. Yeah. And so you don't, but you don't have to have a big confrontation with that. Ask questions. Well, listen, Dad, you, you, you got a perfect score on those tests. How'd you do it? Tell me about it. Mm -hmm. And then you're all happy. He's happy. You're happy. And you've avoided coming. You don't have to have a confrontation. All right. This is Mary who says, Pat, my husband and I fear that the United States economy may collapse. How should middle class couples prepare for such a disaster? Um, listen, uh, we've been preparing for collapse for the last 40, 50 years, and it hadn't come yet. And I, I mean, how are you going to prepare? How much food can you possibly get if everything yeah. tanks? You know, how many bullets are you going to have to get in your AK-47 to shoot the intruders who are trying to take your food away from you? You know, how many underground bunkers have you got to build to keep 
you know, the bad guys from dropping a nuke on your head. You just can't do it. We've got to trust the Lord. But that doesn't mean you forsake wisdom. You need to have a supply of fresh water. You need, if possible, to have a generator for electric power. You need some dried foods and stuff like that on hand. You need a medical kit, except just for those emergencies. It may be a couple of weeks, but you can do that much. And uh, the Bible says, don't forsake wisdom. The, you know, the fool goes on and is punished. So do a little bit, but not the big stuff.